Hi guys, today I'm going to talk about the brain stem nuclei. You can see this model, this is the brain stem. In my previous videos, I focused on the external features of this model uh, with drawing as well. I also showed you the cranial nerves. Now I'm going to show you the, the uh, details of the brain stem nuclei, which is one of the complex parts of the brain. So brain stem nuclei, I'm going to show you the different parts of the brain stem. So at the top, here we have the midbrain. In the middle, you can see the pons. Here is the pons. And down here, we have medulla. You know, we have three types of nuclei. We have motor nuclei, central nuclei, and parasympathetic. A motor in brain stem, it's, it is subdivided into posterior and anterolateral motor, uh, respective to the, their position in the brain stem. So we have posterior motor nuclei. We also have anterolateral motor nuclei. I'm going to show the blue. And then we have parasympathetic, parasympathetic nuclei. And finally, I'm going to demonstrate the sensory nuclei with black. So posterior motor nuclei, they are designed at the same column in the midline. So this is the midline. At the same column, we have posterior motor nuclei. In midbrain, we have two motor nuclei. At the top, we have three and four. Three is called oculo motor. Nucleus. Four is trochlear nucleus. If you go down in pons, we have another nucleus. Six. It is called abducens. Abducens nucleus. At the same column, a little bit down in medulla, we have another one. It is known as the twelve hypo. Glossal. So cranial nerve three, four, six, they are coming out of this uh, nuclei and they are supplying the muscles around the eyeball, extraocular muscles and move the eyeball. Cranial nerve 12, hypoglossal, coming from this, coming out of this hypoglossal nucleus. Hypo means underneath, gloss means tongue. It's penetrating into the tongue underneath or below the tongue and it supplies the all muscles of the tongue. So eyeball, tongue, three, four, six, twelve. Now anterolateral motor nuclei. In the midbrain we don't have anterolateral motor nuclei, but in pons we have five and six, sorry, five and seven motor. So five is motor nucleus of trigeminal, seven is motor nucleus of facial. I'm going to write it here. 5M is motor nucleus of trigeminal and 7 is motor nucleus of facial. So motor nucleus of trigeminal supplies the muscles of mastication which are related to the chewing and speaking. So they are moving mandible. Motor nucleus of facial, as its name tells us, it supplies the facial expression muscles. If you go down, a little bit down in midbrain, at the same column we have another one. It is known as the nucleus ambiguous. N A is nucleus ambiguous. 
which is related to the cranial nerve 9, 10, and 11, and it supplies the muscles of soft palate and uh, uh, larynx and pharynx. They are related to the swallowing and the speaking. So, yeah, we have three motor anterolateral motor nuclei. Now, parasympathetic nuclei. We have four parasympathetic nuclei. One of them is at the top, just topest one here, next to the oculomotor nucleus. It is known as the Edinger Westfall. Edinger Westfall. It's parasympathetic three. The nerve coming out of Edinger Westfall joining the three oculomotor nerve. They are traveling alongside each other and the Edinger Westfall nerve fibers are parasympathetic three and it supplies the ciliary muscles for accommodation, near vision, and it also supplies the sphincter pupillae muscle which de decrease the uh, diameter of the pupil and control the, the light which is passing through the pupil. And at the same column between the six and five and seven, posterior and anterolateral uh, motor nuclei and pons. We have here superior salivary and at the same column down here we have inferior salivary. So superior salivary which is related to cranial nerve 7, parasympathetic 7. Inferior salivary parasympathetic 9. So as their name tells us, they are supplying the salivary glands. So we have in our face, we have two parotid glands just next to the ear. And here we have two submandibular and two sublingual glands. So submandibular and sublingual salivary glands, they are supplied by the parasympathetic 7, which is coming from the superior salivary nucleus. And parotid gland is supplied by the parasympathetic 9, which is coming from inferior salivary nucleus. At the same column in medulla, we have another parasympathetic. It is known as the DMX, DMX dorsal motor nucleus of vagus. Vagus means cranial nerve. 10. It's parasympathetic 10 and it supplies the smooth muscles of the pharynx, larynx, heart, lung, gut. So it's supplying lots of anatomical structures in visceral and in, at the neck. So yeah, we have four parasympathetic nuclei. They are positioned in between the posterior motor nucleus and anterolateral motor nuclei. Edinger Westfall in the midbrain, superior inferior salivary in pons, and DMX in the medulla. Now I'm going to focus on the sensory nucleus. Just keep in mind, sensory nuclei are the most lateral ones, so it's easy. We have the longest or tallest one, which is known as the sensory trigeminal. It's, this is the 5M. Motor trigeminal, this is 5S, sensory trigeminal. It's the tallest one and it's carrying the sensory information from the scalp and from the face. So it's carrying sensory information from this wide area. That's why it is so tall. And just a little bit more lateral at the border of the pons and medulla, we have a diamond shaped nucleus here. It is V is means vestibular, stands for vestibular nucleus, cranial nerve 8, which is related to the, which is coming from the inner ear, related to the balance. And the next sensory nucleus is in medulla. It's a chair-shaped nucleus here. It is called NTS nucleus. Tractus of solitarius. Nucleus tractus solitarius. 
rostral two-thirds of the, this NTS, it's related to the taste, taste, which is coming from tongue and related to the, associated with cranial nerve seven, nine, and 10. And caudal one-third is carrying the sensor information from the viscera, visceral sensory associated with cranial nerve 9 and 10. So this is the sensory. What I'm going to show you now is that this nuclei in the brain is a model. So if you look at closely, you can find them. So here is the midbrain. This is the midbrain. This is the pons. And down here we have medulla. So in the midline, at the same column, in the midbrain we have these two, three and four, oculomotor nucleus and trochlear nucleus. At the same column, if you go a little bit down, in pons we have this bump cranial nerve 6, abducens, so 3, 4, 6. If you go down in medulla, we have this one, it is hypoglossal. So again, I'm going to show you 3, 4 in midbrain, 6 in pons, and hypoglossal in medulla. So they are posterior lateral, sorry, the posterior motor nuclei. Now I'm going to focus on the anterolateral. We don't have anterolateral nuclei in midbrain, but we have two, these two in pons. So this is the abducens I showed you. A little bit lateral at the top we have five, motor five, trigeminal motor nucleus. And down here, it is hidden. This bump is facial nucleus. Yeah, this is the facial. Seven. At the same column, if you go down this long one in medulla, this one is nucleus ambiguous, this one. Nucleus ambiguous is related to 9, 10, 11. So again, 5, 7, nucleus ambiguous. At the same column, we have anterolateral nuclei. Between posterior motor and anterolateral, we have parasympathetic. We have four parasympathetic. The topest one is this, edinger west wall. It is so close to the ocular motor. edinger west wall is parasympathetic three. If you go down in pounds between five, sorry, between six and seven, you can find superior salivary. It's parasympathetic seven. At the same column, we have inferior salivary. Down here in medulla, the thickest one you, you see is the DMX, which is just lateral to the hypoglossal. DMX, dorsal motor nucleus of vagus. So, yeah, we have four. Edinger Westfall, superior salivary, inferior salivary, and DMX. And finally, the sensory one, the tallest one is this. It is really tall, trigeminal sensory. At the top, in the midbrain, we have mesencephalic portion. Just next to the motor nucleus of trigeminal, laterally, we have this one, chief portion. And down here, it is called the spinal trigeminal. Spinal trigeminal is coming from the rostral part of the spinal cord. That's why it's known as the spinal trigeminal. A little bit lateral to this, the most lateral one is this diamond-shaped nucleus, vestibular nucleus, cranial nerve 8. And finally, in medulla, you can find this chair-shaped nucleus, NTS, nucleus tractus of solitarius, which is just lateral to the DMX. This is hyperglossal DMX. This is the NTS. Thank you.